One of the uh, issues that we've been discussing on the sidelines of COP is this precipitous decline in the vulture populations of South Asia. Um, there used to be something like 40 million vultures in India alone, and in a remarkably short span of time, these have now declined to just a few thousand, and there are now three species which are considered to be critically endangered uh, by IUCN. So I've just come from a, a side event meeting we were, where we were discussing this issue, and we have a very promising regional initiative underway where we're trying to bring together the four countries of Nepal, India, Bangladesh, and Pakistan to take a coordinated approach to try to address this problem. Um, I'm sure um, research must have re many research uh, you know efforts must have been put in to identify the reasons behind this drastic reduction in the number. Um, what is uh, the reason that is inferred? There has been a lot of research that's gone into this issue, and at first it was uh, it was quite a mystery. There were a number of different hypotheses that were put forward. Some people thought it might be disease, it might be a virus. Some people thought it might be uh, a chemical like DDT. Uh, it might be loss of habitat. There were a whole range of different hypotheses that were put forward. What we've now found uh, through peer-reviewed studies and including a publication in Nature is that the single most important cause is the use of a veterinary drug called diclofenac. Diclofenac is a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug. It's essentially a painkiller uh, which is used by vets to treat livestock. And when the livestock die and the carcasses are consumed by vultures, in a number of species, the way that they metabolize that particular drug is actually fatal. It leads to, to kidney failure. And that, we believe, is the single most important factor which has driven this precipitous uh, decline in vulture populations. What is the extent of awareness um, as far as this recent phenomenon is concerned um, among governments, among uh, people? Awareness has grown uh, really quite rapidly, and uh, we've been extremely pleased that the governments of all four countries have taken quite swift action. The veterinary use of diclofenac has now been banned in all four countries, uh, which we think is a very, very important step. And there are already some improvements which we're beginning to see in the field from uh, scientific studies that are being carried out by uh, regular monitoring of the vulture populations that is being carried out. We can see that the decline is starting to slow. And in analyses of cattle carcasses, we can also see that the number of carcasses that have this drug, diclofenac, is also starting to decline. So it's a very good sign, but there are still problems. There are, there are loopholes. One of the main problems is that diclofenac is also used by people. And it's still available for sale for human use. And it's made available in large multi-dose vials. And so basically people are still buying the, the drug, supposedly for human use, but they're then going out and using it for livestock. And so it's still getting into the environment and it is still a cause for concern. Okay. Um, has there been any uh, study that has sort of um, tried to set a deadline or have the... Okay. Um, let me put it like this. Have the governments uh, tried to put, try to set a deadline where they'd like to restore the number of vultures to a given um, number? I think the, the restoration of vultures is going to be a, a very long-term process, um, but there are some very encouraging signs. One was the ban on diclofenac that we were just talking about. But in addition to that, there has been a successful captive breeding program which has now been initiated and we are now seeing the uh, first offspring from those programs fledging and we hope that in a few years time if diclofenac is removed completely from the environment we can begin to restore vultures to the wild. Uh, in May of 2012 this year we had a very successful regional conference which was organized by the government of India and IUCN in Delhi which brought together the four countries, the four range countries of South Asia, together with uh, international and national NGOs, but also a whole range of other stakeholders, uh, educationists, uh, religious leaders from the Parsi and Jain traditions, and also very importantly the pharmaceutical industry.
That conference led to a very important regional declaration. And as I've been saying earlier in some of the meetings, there's, there's no shortage of declarations in, in South Asia, and it's easy to be a bit cynical about these things. But we really feel that this declaration is, is different. It's truly regional in scope. It has some very specific, concrete, tangible, and very important commitments which government has now made in each of the four countries towards vulture conservation. And we're trying to build on that now to develop a regional program for vulture recovery in South Asia. Um, and um, what will these regional programs focus on apart from dissemination of information and awareness programs? So we see provisionally four main components to a regional program. The first is that there's still a need to strengthen the regulatory framework, the policy framework. One of the things we're keen to ensure is that as new drugs come onto the market, they are also tested for their potential toxicity to, to vultures. A second component is, as you mentioned, awareness and education. But we really feel this needs to be very carefully targeted. And we need to look at the key audiences uh, who we need to reach. So we know we need to reach at the national level, policy makers, decision makers. But we also need to go right down to the grassroots level and reach uh, local veterinarians, local communities, uh, livestock owners, and really work with them to try to remove diclofenac. The good news is that there's a safe alternative. It's called meloxicam. Uh, it's just as effective. It's slightly more expensive, um, but the price is coming down. And we're trying to promote that as, uh, as an alternative to diclofenac. Third component of the program that we're talking about is ex situ conservation, the captive breeding program that I mentioned. There's still a need to scale that up. Uh, a number of areas still don't have uh, breeding centers. We would like to get those going. And the fourth element is in situ conservation, where we're trying to conserve the remaining vulture populations in the wild and also to create what we're calling vulture safe zones. Now, vulture safe zones are areas of 100 uh, kilometer radius, uh, which is actually a huge area. And the idea is to work very intensively with local communities in those areas to remove diclofenac from the environment, to promote this safe alternative, meloxicam, uh, and to bring back the vultures in those areas. Those areas will also become the future release sites from the captive breeding programs. So those are the four main strategies that, uh, that we hope to pursue, and there are already you know, good signs of success. Brilliant. Um, so starting from understanding the problem to uh, the challenges that are being faced, uh, in tackling the problem and uh, the solutions and the expected uh, results. I think we've touched upon all the four important dimensions of uh, this issue, which is which is very um, uh, surprising. Uh, the number, the reduction in the number uh, of vultures has been very drastic. Uh, and uh, I, I, I think that when we talk about biodiversity distortion, these are some of the, these, these are the starkest manifestation of uh, biodiversity uh, getting distorted. Um, Mr. Uh, Perkin, thank you so much for your time and insights. It was a pleasure talking to you. Could I, can I, can I add something more? Sure, I, sure, I sure. I think um, the important thing about this issue is that it's, it's not just about a species uh, recovery program. What we're really talking about is the loss of an ecosystem service. When the vultures were present, they were consuming literally thousands of tons of rotting meat every year. Now that the vultures have disappeared, we're faced with a massive waste disposal problem. We're seeing the contamination of groundwater supplies. We're seeing fields that are being taken out of uh, production when a cow dies and then the farmers are unable to use that field for several weeks. We're hearing reports of a tremendous increase in the feral dog population, an increase in attacks on people, an increase in rabies. And so it goes much beyond uh, just a species project. Um, vultures are also very closely linked to the ancient traditions of a number of communities, including the Jain community and also the Parsi community. And you may know that the Parsis traditionally offer their dead to the vultures in what they call towers of silence. Now with the collapse in the vulture population, that whole ancient custom is, is completely under threat. Uh, so I think it's a very important point to stress that it, it's not just about you know the, the recovery of, 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 of several species. There's a whole impact on human health and on ecosystems that we're also addressing.